a model steamboat named Edith. This is part 6, glass fibre reinforcement inside the hull. In the previous episode I showed how weak the hull was and I also showed the gaps in the plating underneath. At the moment the hull is on its side in the workshop and I'm using a vacuum cleaner just to remove all the particles of paint left in the hull. In the previous episode I used a pressure washer to blast off all the loose paint. In this clip I'm removing these water fittings. They're all redundant now. The original idea was the boat took water from the lake and then pumped it into the boiler but this is never a good idea. I'm going to build a water tank into the boat which will also help with the much needed ballast in the boat because it's going to need a lot to float it at the right level. And now it's out onto the picnic table in the middle of the lawn to mix some polyester resin with the correct amount of hardener to bond the glass fibre tape to the side of the hull. I decided to use tape like this because it's easy to apply. A big sheet would have been almost impossible to cut accurately, so all I need to do is just overlap this tape and eventually the hull will become very strong. I'm using a small paintbrush to apply the resin and I'm stippling it in order to work the resin into the glass cloth. Picking up resin on a brush and stippling it into the glass cloth is a very slow process and the main problem is I keep spilling the resin onto the boat. I don't often work with glass fibre, I just do my best and figure it out as I go along. So if there are any professional glass fibre people watching this, I do apologise for the uh, incompetence and please read that as incompetence, not incontinence. I really do find the best way to learn is to do it and you may make a mess of it, but after a while you stop making quite as big a mess. Although fibreglassing, as far as I can see, is a very messy process. The resin gets everywhere. At the moment, quite a bit of it's on my hand, and I'm fairly confident that very shortly there will be pieces of glass cloth also stuck to my fingers. That's why, being smart, I have a pot of cellulose thinners. So periodically, I dip a piece of cloth in the cellulose thinners and wipe my fingers with it. At this stage, I normally like to add cellulose thinners is known as lacquer thinner in the USA. A quick note for those of you who like making boats, don't use this stuff if you're bonding parts to small model boats because the glass fibre of the hull is quite thin and the heat generated by this stuff curing may distort the glass fibre hull of your model boat. For bonding components inside model boats that are made from glass fibre, I would normally use epoxy products, either epoxy resin and hardener, or I would use a two-pack putty such as Milliput or the excellent JB Weld. That is really strong stuff, especially if you use the 24-hour version. But all of that is really nothing to do with this boat. I will be using some JB Weld to repair part of it, but I don't think the heat generated by this polyester resin curing is going to affect the hull of this boat because it's made of metal plates that are soft-soldered together. Here's a top tip. On a very hot day like today, don't mix too much of this resin because it will soon go off before you can get a chance to use it. I'll mix a bit less next time. Now the polyester resin that is inside the boat is no longer runny and it's getting quite firm. I can turn the hull upside down, or in this case on its side, and scrape out whatever this filler was that was put in many years ago. To remove this old filler that someone had put in at some stage, I'm using a scalpel. This is a scalpel that was sent to me by a very kind viewer and it's extremely sharp with a long pointy blade. What I intend to do is fill this gap with some JB Weld and then fill around the depression that caused this problem in the first place. It looks a little bit like impact damage as though part of the hull got dinted and that separated some of the plates. I'm trying to tap them back with a hammer, very gently of course, and the hammer's not really doing much, it's closed the gap very slightly. But once I fill this gap with JB Weld and then fill over the top with car body filler, rub it down etc etc and paint it, it will be fine. I've mixed another quantity of polyester resin and this time I haven't mixed quite as much so hopefully the amount that I have should match the speed at which I can apply the resin to the glass fibre in the boat. As before rather than just using the brush I do find it better to tip the resin into the boat and spread it out with the brush. And as you can see I'm working much faster this time. It's the wonder of modern technology. I just speed the video up and I can get all the glass fibre in position far quicker than I did previously. And this time, before the resin went into that sort of jelly state, just before it's about to set, I poured some of it into the bottom of the boat and held the boat in an upright position so that I got a nice even coating of resin in the bottom of the hull. Although it's not really good enough just to glass fibre the inside of the hull, 
I'm going to make sure that the outside of the hull is watertight as well. I could have done it this way without the glass fibre, but this is a belt and braces approach. I'm sealing the inside of the hull and I'm going to seal the outside of the hull. So the entire structure should be a lot stronger than it currently is at the moment. When I looked at the footage that I got whilst I was doing this job, most of it is of my elbow, or my arm, or my back, or the back of my head. It was quite difficult to video because I was in and around the hull all the time and I couldn't mess about with the camera because it was a race against time to stick all the glass fibre in the boat before the polyester resin started to set. Within a couple of hours I'd coated every part of the inside of the hull. So the next time I float the boat in the bath this shouldn't happen, it should stay on the surface of the water which is the general idea. And that's it for this one, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.